Today we're going to talk about the driving forces for chemical reactions. Whenever there's a reaction that happens, you should be able to identify the driving force for those reactions, and today we're going to go over those driving forces. First, the formation of a solid. Anytime you form a precipitate, that's a driving force for reaction. For example, in the lab we form lead to iodide. That's a bright yellow precipitate. You right, remember that? We see that bright yellow precipitate that's right there. That's a driving force for reaction, the formation of a solid. First driving force. Number two, formation of water. We haven't done a lot of these, but anytime you form water, that's a driving force. Now, when do you do that? Anytime you have an acid base reaction. We're going to learn that we use indicators that show us if something's an acid or a base, and this is a piece of litmus paper. And in an acid base reaction, water is formed. So the formation of water is a driving force for a reaction. Number three, Next driving force is the transfer of electrons. Now, you don't actually do not see electrons, but this is actually shown in many types of reactions. For example, a combustion reaction. When we burn the magnesium, electrons were transferred in that reaction. We have magnesium and oxygen. We form magnesium oxide. So there's electrons that are transferred between the magnesium and oxygen and when you form the compound. So transfer of electrons is a big driving force for chemical reactions. Finally, we have the formation of a gas. For example, if you put, we did this as well, we talked about this in lab, if you put acid on a carbonate or a bicarbonate, carbon dioxide is, found, is formed. Also, we, we show the formation of hydrogen gas or oxygen gas could, should be formed as well. Anytime you form a gas, that's a driving force for a reaction. So those are the four driving forces of a reaction. So what you should be able to do is anytime you have a reaction, be able to identify what is a driving force. Next, what are indicators for a chemical reaction? I'm listing these because they're very similar, but it's a little bit longer list here. The first indicator of a chemical reaction is the emission of light or heat. Now, you're going to typically have this when you transfer electrons, so light or heat we'll think about as a transferring electrons. For example, when you have fireworks, a lot of light and heat transferred in that, that's an indication of a chemical reaction anytime you have light or heat. Next indicator. Formation of a gas, we just mentioned that. The next one, formation of a precipitate. We have those when we do those double displacement reactions. Another fancy word for a double displacement or a precipitation reaction is called metathesis. You might want to look that up. And next, we have the color change. For example, when something rusts, if you take iron, which this is iron and it started to rust, it goes from a, a very shiny metal to one of a very dull appearance. So color change as that iron oxidizes is an indication of a chemical reaction. And lastly, we have the emission of odor. For example, if you look in an egg and egg starts to rot, it actually is a chemical change. So a lot of things are, are cooled down in a grocery store so things are preserved to prevent them from reacting and forming a new substance, and it preserves this, uh, whatever uh, grocery product there is. So that, that's it. That's the indication, four indicators uh, of the four driving forces for reaction and the five indicators for our chemical, chemical reactions. Thanks. Have a good day.